Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday took the Malaysian Indians by storm, touching their roots, greeting them in their own language and paying tribute to their forefathers. Addressing the Indian diaspora at the iconic Malaysia International Chamber of Commerce in Kuala Lumpur, Prime Minister said that India is not confined to its territory, but it exists in every Indians in every part of the world. Prime Minister called for delinking terror from religion. Prime Minister asserted that India draws its strength from its diversity and his government is committed to defend the rights of every citizen. Prime Minister will hold bilateral talks with his Malaysian counterpart in Kuala Lumpur today. Both countries are expected to sign several key agreements. Later in the day, the Prime Minister will leave for Singapore on the second leg of his two-nation East Asia visit. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be on air for the next Man Ki Baat program on November 29th. The program will be broadcast live on the entire All India Radio Network and Doodarshan channels. The Prime Minister has invited people to share their messages for this edition of Man Ki Baat on mygov.in. One can also dial 1-800-300-7800 and record message for the upcoming edition of Man Ki Baat. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley will meet heads of public sector union banks today to discuss various issues including bad loans and interest rate reduction in the light of RBI lowering its policy rate in September. The performance review meeting of the public sector banks will also take stock of the credit flow to productive sectors to spur economy and review of Indra Dhanush, the seven-pronged strategy to revive PSBs. India test pilots indigenously developed supersonic interceptor missile from the Abdul Kalam island of the Odisha coast on Sunday. The interceptor, known as Advanced Air Defence Missile, developed by the Defence Research and Development Organisation, is capable of destroying any incoming ballistic missile. In April this year, the AAD missile had failed to hit the target missile during a similar test. In Tamil Nadu, heavy rain has affected normal life in many places. The Met Office said trough of low pressure has formed over southwest Bay of Bengal, bordering Sri Lanka. This will result in heavy rain in coastal Tamil Nadu and isolated rain in many parts of the state. The death toll in northeast monsoon rain in the state has risen to more than 130. Prediction of further rains has forced the state government to shut all schools and colleges in Chennai. Government has bolstered the capabilities of the elite financial intelligence unit which can now dish out volumes of data on suspicious transactions in 72 hours flat and gain access to secret database of offenders maintained by various law enforcement agencies in the country. Earlier, when an agency wanted to get any information on financial transaction and other similar details on entities on its scanner, the time taken used to be between a fortnight to 20 days. Government is looking to further simplify income tax return forms to help taxpayers fill them without seeking help from experts and the Revenue Department has set up a committee in this regard. The committee will be headed by a Joint Secretary-level officer and would include chartered accountants and tax experts. Commerce and Industry Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has said India and European Union would resume talks on the proposed free trade agreement soon, expressing disappointment and concern over the EU banning sale of around 700 pharma products clinically tested by GVK Biosciences. India had in August deferred FTA talks with the EU. In Shinabura murder case, CBI grilled Rahul Mukherjee for over four hours on Sunday, even though Rahul publicly defended his father, former media baron Peter Mukherjee, claiming that he is innocent and has nothing to do with the murder of his fiancée Sheena Bora. Sources in the Central Bureau of Investigation claim that the evidence given by Rahul will be used today to seek Peter's extended custody. UN Secretary General Baki Moon urged Russia and the United States to cooperate in rooting out terrorism and said, he would unveil a comprehensive plan to fight extremism and violence early next year. He said this at the annual East Asia Summit. At the same summit, U.S. President Barack Obama said the United States and his allies would not relent in the fight to combat Islamic State extremists and would hunt down their leaders and cut off the group's financing. France has sent in the biggest warship in Europe with monster nuclear capabilities to intensify its fight against the Islamic State. The 40,000-ton nuclear ship is the only nuclear part carrier outside the U.S. and comes after the French Prime Minister feared terrorists were ready to use chemical bombs against the country. French police has released a photo of the third of the three suicide bombers who blew themselves up outside France's national stadium during the November 13 Paris attacks. Investigators said that the assailant turned up among refugees on the Greek island of Leros along with another attacker who remains unidentified. 
Belgium's Prime Minister has said that Brussels will remain at the highest possible alert today with schools, universities and metros closed over a serious and imminent security threat in the wake of the Paris attacks. The decision was taken after a meeting of the National Security Council to review the situation. India lifted the 8th Men's Junior Hockey Asia Cup on Sunday, beating traditional rivals Pakistan 6-2 in the finals placed in the Malaysian city of Kuantan. For India, Harmanpreet Singh scored four goals and Manpreet and Arman Qureshi scored one goal each. Earlier, India had beaten Japan 6-1 in the semi-final.